Hello, very good evening. Namaste and welcome to Chitta Media and the Festival of Bharat. Today we are joined by Mr. Arup Chatterjee, who is an Indian author, uh, or rather should I say author of Indian origin. And he is famously known for his critique, contesting the legacy and life of Mother Teresa. Arup Ji, thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste and I hope everything's well in Australia. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you for asking me. Uh, I, I wouldn't call it a critique. I would call it a factual analysis. Although people call me a, a, a critic, people might call right. my work, a, you know, critique, and also people call my work controversial. But I don't think I have put anything controversial in it. It's very few subjective statements. Right. It's very, very factual. I put all the facts down for the reader to see, read, and then they can make up their own minds. Right. Uh, uh, the, it, it'll be a very interesting conversation, and um, uh, let me begin by asking you this: There, there's a widespread regard for the work that Mother Teresa has done, and it's almost as if one cannot comment on this subject without receiving harsh criticism, right? <laughs> so, in that sense, how would you begin by characterizing what Mother Teresa's life and legacy was? Okay, I mean, you have actually hit the nail on the head that you can't even discuss her without. Uh, a halo coming from even you as a reflection. And uh, it, it is very irritating because um, you can't comment on her, you can't discuss her, you can't even criticize her, obviously. But it, it is very much different now in Western Europe. You can criticize her. And also among serious journalists and media people in the West, criticism, criticism of Teresa is, has become the norm. It is, um, unfortunately, in India and in Calcutta, it's, it's very unusual. Whereas uh, I think, uh, uh, not do I, I think, um, um, I can assure you the, the opposite should be the case. In India, in particular in Calcutta, in West Bengal, Mother Teresa's criticism should be paramount because she destroyed the reputation of the city, my, uh, my town of origin and my birth of my youth uh, permanently and probably for a century to come. Calcutta will suffer because of the association of Mother Teresa. Why would you say that? Because some people would say that that is a very harsh way of uh, looking at her life because all she tried to do was help the poor. Yes, I mean, that's the myth. She did not have much regard for the poor. She was a very cynical person when it came to charity and the poor. All she was interested in was a promotion of her faith and herself. I, it wasn't a conspiracy, no. I mean, please don't uh, fall into this Indian trap of looking at everything through a conspiracy and the financial prism. She did not get into this, or she did not do this sort of subterfuge or false city to enrich herself or to live a life of luxury. Although she was very rich and she passed on her funds to the Vatican, she did it for ideology. And uh, coming from a left ideology myself, and I still belong to the left ideology, make it very clear. I can understand how people can uh, forsake, forsake everything for the sake of their faith and their ideology. So that's what she did. And what, what she did was she used to go around the world uh, four or five times a year. She used to spend probably eight months sometimes, eight months a year sometimes in Europe and US. She used to go around telling everybody that Calcutta was uh, a, a, just a mass of uh, slums and sewers and gutters. That was, a, um, that was uh, the phrase that, is, that was used repeatedly, uh, right. sometimes by her, by her and mostly by journalists. Sewers and gutters of Calcutta were where limbless lepers lay wailing to be saved. And she used to come around and lift them up and take them to her hundreds of homes in Calcutta. Calcutta, right. Calcutta had nothing uh, except uh, missions of charity homes and an, un, an innumerable number of um, destitute who were just screaming for help. And Teresa was the only help giver. So this is the image that has stuck in the mind of, minds of the world. And right. she really and truly damaged the city permanently. You're a Bengali yourself, so you'll be able to qualify this statement further, uh, better than anybody else. 
mm-hmm. the the legacy uh, that uh, mother teresa left behind in calcutta what people say is that they have they hold her in very high regard for the contribution so are you saying that's all a myth and that the ground impact of mother teresa is rather very limited the mother teresa mother teresa's charity was very limited if she helped one person she would talk about it thousand times and people thought that she was probably helping a million her soup kitchens fed uh, probably 25 people three times a week and it wasn't it was a very slap dash uh, you know shoddy operation it wasn't like a huge soup kitchen like the uh, uh, sikh people you know the gurdwaras do or you know it wasn't uh, they, she doesn't have any uh, structured helping system for the poor she had a large number of exclusion criteria if she accepted a, a somebody from the streets one of them was that she had to uh, uh, take the baby in to convert the baby and then sell them to a uh, couple uh, in the west a catholic couple so as you probably know that the uh, child selling um, racket that she operated came to light in 2016 but unfortunately for indians and for caucasians and for bengalis nothing nothing that the woman did uh, was serious enough or or grave enough everything um um they, they, they she did every grievous thing she did they would qualify with qualify with oh whoa, but what about you know in 1979 uh, she helped my cousins sir, maid servants uh, the third cousin what about that then you didn't do anything did you i'm not a i'm not a charity worker i'm a doctor you can criticize me as a doctor that doesn't mean you have to be a doctor i can you can say that you're a rubbish doctor but that's fine i I'll, i'll accept your criticism if it's reasonable in the same sense i'm not going to help your mate maid servants cousins third cousin because i'm not a charity worker she has got the nobel prize she is telling the world that she is helping every single person in calcutta she is feeding every single person in calcutta whereas she is refusing 99% of people that came to her door she is keeping the door shut if you want i can send you videos to to tell you what's what's what what is happening or right. what happened i have live videos i have videos of a telling uh, a congregation in in scripps clinic in 1992 that she was, she was surreptitiously converting mori one people who were not able to give consent listen i have to make it very clear here i am obviously from the left yeah and i don't have a huge problem with uh, any problem with conversion even for money or for love or for sex if people want to convert you know in full consciousness if they accept money or a bag of rice up to them but what teresa did and i have evidence she converted people when they were not able to consent and that's a gross violation of human rights i can tell you this if this was done by any other person hindus would rise up but if teresa when teresa did it it was fine she did, they didn't bother i had this video in 1994 5 i obtained this video that she was talking about this surreptitious conversion and i deliberately did not publicize it because i thought well you know it's not a good idea because it might cause a riot and you know it would be a, a wrong thing to do to flare up a uh, communal tension but e- e- eventually when i when i made it public in 2016 nobody nobody cared i was appalled actually and when you know a, a muslim girl uh, sorry muslim boy marries a hindu girl you know there are fireworks you know people start fighting and screaming and killing each other whereas this woman was she said on video you you probably have the link anyway which is uh, uh, the mother trees of conversion video you, you may have the link i don't know whether you want to link it with this with this um, uh, interview it yeah uh, it was my video by the way you, you, you should, just technology that's fine yeah. and um, you, you, she said that until january 1992 she converted secretly 29000 people in that fashion and nobody cared why i mean i don't understand this this blindness uh, uh, this total uh, subjugation this spinelessness that comes into i mean it doesn't mind you it doesn't take a lot to make indians spineless i mean i think the the default is spinelessness and occasionally some indians have shown some spine you know uh, during uh, british raj even like you know bhagat singh shows spine and some you know so bengal is gone about how brave they were they were not most of the people are just like most indians 
some of them were, 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 were brave. And, and in the Mother Teresa work, I found out that, that cowardice and collusion and, and lapping up to the rich and powerful is actually uh, the, you know, this a standard uh, mindset, mindset of the Indian, particularly the Bengali. Right. And um, since when did you show interest in this subject? I mean, when did it all start? <laughs> Well, most of my adult life, it seems. I don't know. I mean, that's become part of my life. Although I don't do much, I I, I have lost my obsession with it. Right. But I don't do much at the moment. But I think I think it it it, it doesn't leave me. I I came to live in United Kingdom in 1985, and when I, I this is very very important. When I came to United Kingdom in 1985, I had zero interest in Mother Teresa, zero, because. I, I just about heard her name. She got her Nobel Prize in 1979, mind you. Even then, I just, you know, for me, it was a she was a peripheral figure. As a, as a left worker, I used to work occasionally. I cannot claim that I was a, you know, a diehard, um, you know, com communist. I was occasionally working in the slums and working with poor people. And in my, in my modest work with poor people and in the slums, I never, ever, ever, had come across missions of charity or Mother Teresa being mentioned, or I've, I had never seen any of her um, nuns working in any any capacity in, right. in, in the slums or in poor areas. So that was my image about her in the back of my mind. So when I came to the West, I had hardly heard of her. So by 1997, 98, uh, people started saying to me, uh, in UK, people don't actually ask you if you say you are from India, it is considered rude to say, where are you from, from India? They said, oh yes, that's fine. Very interesting, exotic country, et cetera, et cetera. Occasionally people ask me, so where in India are you from? And uh, if I, then I said Calcutta, obviously, quite proudly or neutrally. And then there was some pregnant silence. And then I, and it took me about a year to realize that the, the silence was due to some kind of shock saying that, oh, a, a man with intact limbs coming from Calcutta, how, you know, it's, it doesn't fit into the narrative of what we have heard and read and seen on TV, that everybody in Calcutta has got some kind, some disease or some leprosy right. or, or is severely undernourished and has never obviously come abroad or anything like that. So that came to me gradually through close acquaintances and also through my future wife as well. When I, uh, when I was dating her, um, I, 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 she didn't know I was from Gagada. And when, when she asked me, and I said from Gagada, and she said to me, oh, is that, is that the place of poverty? That was my future wife, can you believe that? And I just couldn't believe, I, I, said, I, I said, why did she, why did she say that? I thought about it later on, I said, why did she say that? And then I, uh, uh, when I read things or I saw on TV, I realized that she wasn't wrong because that was the, the abiding image. Uh, uh, of Gagada in the world, uh, especially in Ireland where my wife comes from. Right. So you know, I I kind of started doing uh, some un, you know some some low level work and networking and then I approached well she was a family friend I asked a family friend that look this is really bothering me uh, it's gnawing at my heart this um, uh, this these lies that goes on and this image of the of the of the place of my birth uh, and my forefather's town uh, I said what can I do about it and she said why don't you why don't you approach Tariq Ali's production company, Bangdung Productions? Uh, Tariq Ali is a, is, a, is a famous Marxist in the United Kingdom. I, I, I knew of him, I didn't know him. So I just rang his office, his production company, which is now folded, called Bangdung Productions. And his, his assistant, who ran the um, film company, she answered the phone. And I just said to her, look, you don't know me, I don't know you. Uh, I'm so-and-so, and I come from Calcutta. And would you be interested in doing a film? Uh, about uh, the myth of Mother Teresa, and um, uh, and she said, okay, I'll think about it. Uh, if you send me a proposal, an A4 size proposal, so I faxed a proposal. To her. This is the day of faxes, um, 1994 February. Uh, so I faxed a one-page proposal to her. She came back to say that look, I, I we went to a channel for television, and they would do uh, the film, uh, uh, and they would not go to Calcutta because we didn't get the funds. They'll do a half an hour documentary from archival material. That's how it started. I didn't know at all that Mother Teresa was considered a goddess in Calcutta at the time. Mm -hmm. I just thought that most people were like me, either neutral or they would be uh, very swayed 
by my argument about her uh, myth making about her negative portrayal of the city so right. when the when the film was made there was a lot of criticism of us and to this day uh, hardly anybody uh, uh, has come with me i have not I, i haven't got a following in calcutta i haven't got a a, a base that i can uh, i can rely on Right. um my idea would have been that i would form a group of people who would do some research on this i would uh, probably some people might take up my work and i i, I wouldn't bother with it. i i don't actually bother with this line of work too much anymore but all i get from indians is criticism, criticism and and you know what the what really hurts me that i get criticism from both ends of the political spectrum left right center three ends and 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 the liberal uh, lobby when they criticize me that really hurts me most mind you the left in in west bengal now mostly they have realized that she was a fraud and how she has harmed the city and they have uh, they are kind of on my side although they don't go they don't go public with it but the liberal lobby like say you know your famous uh, i don't want to name any names but some of the famous journalists of india right. you know they they are um, quite pro teresa Uh, mm-hmm. and it, it takes a lot to 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 break that stereotype for them but they probably they're probably a little bit skeptical I'll, i i give you i always tell them one thing i said look forget about forget about the deep stuff or the other stuff or conversion forget about the conversion forget about the money that you know she siphoned off the vatican bank etc think like this take a hindu baba with a with a saffron robe or a sadhvi okay who we don't particularly have high regard for and neither do i neither no, not to you this baba this sadhvi telling married couples married couples not to practice contraception okay telling a gang raped women gang raped women that abortion sin and you must not have abortion and you must have the baby that you're carrying if a a saffron person said that how would you regard that person would you uh would you worship that person no regard at all can sorry can you, you what sorry no regard at all at exactly exactly and imagine a liberal a liberal having high regard for teresa when that was her, that was the the cornerstones of her uh, philosophy that abortion is murder she even said that her her nobel prize speech was just a confused you know gobbledygook really it was a very low level speech you know i'm really and, and glad that you bring this up um, and the reason is uh, I, i agree with you you know especially our indians's attitude towards atheism or for that matter any critique of say people like mother teresa is almost sacrosanct and you you know these subjects cannot be touched um, but what why? surprises I mean, me why? I, mean, you know, i can't understand what you know, surprises I mean, me can... even more is that now there is a hindu nationalist quote and quote government after narendra modi took over whose political agenda is also to stop forced conversions but even people in the right seem to have a high amount of regard for mother teresa so in that sense has a political class completely failed i don't know i don't i don't want to go into the politics because then you know that would maybe conflicted uh, we might become conflicted about my politics and yours because that's not something we we need to do there what all i can say is the liberals have failed me and failed my culture failed my city and failed themselves because they have they are constantly defying a woman who is ultra right wing she's a creature of darkness she's an obscurantist she believed probably that it was flat because it's written so she probably believed that the earth uh, uh, um, the sun moved around the earth because that's what the bible implies I'll, another thing uh, when i tell liberals there was a case in san francisco a few years before teresa died of a of a catholic priest called maguire he was accused of multiple pedophilia charges yeah and teresa wrote a letter of support for him right. saying that he was passing the indiscretions he should be condoned and imagine imagine a, a, a hindu baba or a sadh be doing it and what would your, your liberals they will do song and dance non stop in the streets right uh, 
giving a pedophile priest a certificate that he ought to be condoned. That was what Teresa did. And, and liberals are quiet about it. Why? Right. And I get this abused. Something that I was going to bring up next uh, about her association uh, with many controversial figures in history. Uh, one is Malcolm Muggeridge. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, yeah, 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 there's yeah, a yeah, lot correct. of controversy surrounding that person too. Well, they are academic. They're not, he, well, he was a hypocrite, anti-Semite. He hated Jews. Um, he was very, very, very right-wing. He was very anti-socialist okay. bloc. He, he, he was working with the CIA to bring down the socialist bloc, which, you know, some right-wingers in India, they would say that was a fine thing to do. That's fine. But he was a very strongly political figure. He was very anti-Jew, you know, in his, in his, in his writing. And, and um, this is a bit, bit, bit complicated because it's, it's, it's part of European history. Uh, it's not totally known in India that the, the, the right wing of the Catholic Church, which Teresa belonged to, uh, is very anti-Semitic uh, in, in theological way. And that's why um, the Pope Pius XII, the Pope during um, Hitler's reign, he facilitated a lot of the Holocaust um, transportation. He kept quiet and probably he helped and that wing of the Catholic Church is is extremely ultra right wing, and they have a um, they have strong connections with the mafia, and they run the Vatican Bank called in Institute of Religious Works I O R in English. And Ma when Muggeridge became a Catholic, he was he was originally a Protestant, but he laterally became a Catholic after meeting Mother Teresa. He he got he uh, was drawn to that wing of the Catholic Church. This ultra right wing, ultra right wing. He was a total hypocrite because he tried to ban condoms for university students, but he was having, he had affairs uh, through his, all his life. I mean, he never stopped having affairs. Or he, he lived in Calcutta for a while as assistant editor of the Statesman newspaper. He had affairs with Armita Shergill. Um, and uh, once he went back to UK, he, he I probably, you know, I don't know, hundreds of women he had. But that's that's his his between him and his wife. But he preached that you shouldn't have anything like that. You should, you should uh, lead right. a celibate life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he loved Mother Teresa, and uh, he was the one who uh, made her famous uh, through his contacts in the BBC, because uh, in 1969 he made a film called Something Beautiful for God, which made her uh, took her to the to world stage really. Right. So that, You've that also written a... about um, how there is no sense of proportion in the amount of funding that uh, her foundation uh, or her NGO had received and the amount of work that they were carrying out in Calcutta in reality. Calcutta, what, what, what actually did they do? They so said their uh, so-called home for the dying, it's a dire place, it's like a concentration camp. They're not even beds properly. Why beds. would you they're say that? Hammocks. They're, they're like concentration, it's like a concentration camp. The, it's a very small place. People, uh, when people come from the West, they think it's vast. There goes thousands and thousands of people. It's actually, it's got less than 100, 100 places. And each bed is half the size of a normal bed, less than half the size. It's a hammock um, and hardly any space between beds. Um, the care is minimal. During Teresa's time, the care was ab abysmal and quite cruel. Uh, nobody knows how, how much fun she gets from abroad because she, she never published her accounts. I don't know whether they do now, but during that time, it was unthinkable for Teresa to publish her accounts. She took money from anybody and everybody. You probably know that she accepted loads of money from Charles Keating, who was the biggest American fraud, fraud yes. until then. And right. then uh, what happened was uh, when Keating got, uh, also Keating gave her, gave her his private jet. Yeah. And, and she gave him um, a miraculous medal, a specially blessed medal. So Keating got caught, and then um, um, she wrote a letter to Judge Lance Eater, who was trying the case, saying that you know he was a very good man, a very good Catholic. He's helped me a lot. Please let him go. Can you imagine somebody writing to a judge, let this convict go? Right. Uh, obviously, uh, the district attorney uh, wrote to her saying that look, Mother Teresa, you are supposed to be so charitable. Charles Keating um, is a mega fraudster. He made his money from cheating small people. 
not from not from cheating mega stars or anything like that. He ran a pyramid skill, scheme where small like barbers, cobblers, shopkeepers, you know, immigrants, they put his, uh, their money in his chit fund and they lost everything. So what you ought to do, you, use, you need to refund those little monies to those little peoples. Uh, uh, Mother Teresa never even replied to this letter by the district attorney. Uh, right. so this, is, this is her morals. This, this was also true in the case of many other figures like Robert Maxwell and uh, the Duvillier family, I think. Uh, but what yes. is more well, Maxwell, we don't know how much Maxwell gave her, probably quite a lot of money. And Maxwell became very enamored with her for right. whatever reason. Uh, but she was also very close to um, Imelda Marcos, another corrupt and extremely uh, brutal woman. Uh, the Duvaliers of Haiti, she was very much in love with. And she said that Madame Duvalier uh, uh, gets the love of her people so much that she's never seen such love for the population, for a president's wife anywhere in the world. Uh, that was a certificate she gave to Michel Duvalier. The Duvalier family was uh, not only milking Haiti, right and left and center, I mean, really ferociously stealing money and running a drug cartel as well in their private jets, uh, running the drugs to Florida and all that. They were also killing uh, Haitians in very innovative ways, like uh, drop a person into a cage with a hungry dog. That was quite common. That was, that was the Duvaliers, that, that's, that what they, that's what they would do to, to, to if they didn't like anybody who opposed them. And Teresa was absolutely like this with the Duvalier family and accepted unknown amount of, amounts of cash from them. So this is her morals. Don't tell me that she didn't know that, that these people were not only corrupt, but totally ruthless and totally immoral. But she had no problems because she, her, her issue was all this money was going to the Vatican in order to promote her brand of Catholicism. So that is fine. In a way, she did become an advocate and an enabler for the Vatican foreign policy. Would you agree? Absolutely right. Without her, look, I mean, the Vatican would have been uh, considered uh, funny, corrupt, people with funny hats, funny robes, uh, with a with a poncha for um, young boys. Um, Vatican is actually... Uh, a system of institutional pedophilia. Again, Indians don't know this because Vatican scandals erupt every six months. You know, sex with six-year-old boys, thousands of them. It's not sporadic like happens in every culture, every, every neighborhood, every family. This is ingrained in Vatican psyche that sex with small children is a must almost. Okay, and this erupts in the, in the uh, international press every six months. What happened in 2021? You probably haven't heard of it. This Canadian scandal erupted and it was all over the Western world that yeah. the Vatican, uh, that the Catholic Church killed thousands of indigenous uh, Canadians and, and just dumped their bodies in, in mass graves. And many of them were sexually abused, yeah? And where, where, was, where were the headlines in India? Zero. Because these Indians, again, it's not a conspiracy, not a conspiracy, no money changing hands. Indians don't need money from anybody to support the Catholic Church because their spines, if they have any, are actually a mortgage to, the, to Western corruption. Western, I wouldn't call the Vatican West, but anyway, the, the, that kind of thing. Because Indian journalists, they are mostly broke, you know, they went to these so-called convent schools, well, convent so-called schools. Every morning they were forced to chant, you know, Gishu Baba Namaskar, Apni Bara Purishkar. I'm talking in Bengali. Well, this is a some kind of sarcasm we do. You know, oh, what was what, this? Father, thou art, thou art yeah, in heaven, yeah. Jishu is good, Jishu is the best, my gods are the worst. No option that, you know, if you are a Muslim or a, or a Hindu or a Buddhist, you can't opt out, okay? Yeah. No option for non-believers. You have to do it. And an and Indian... Uh, um, Parents think that's great because it's a sign of inclusion. If it's a sign of, inclu if it's a sign of inclusion, why is not a rotational prayer right. of all the faiths? 
I, I, I would ask you. So anyway, so subliminally, these children, when they grow up to be adults, they'll lose the power of any critical thinking when it comes to the Catholic Church. So thing is that they don't report. If, they, if, it, if it comes on, on their uh, computer screen that you know, a major scandal of pedophilia has erupted in the Catholic Church, they probably delete it completely. They don't bother reporting it, or the, the newspapers. Ireland, being a Catholic nation technically, broke off contact, diplomatic connection with the Vatican over, over child abuse a few years back. It, they were so mad about it. And the yeah. prime minister made an official statement in the Irish parliament about how evil the Catholic Church, church was, is rather. Yeah. And, and can you imagine even a minor politician in India even, even, even uh, remarking that perhaps you know, the child selling scandal of the missionaries of charity should be investigated because right. they were scared. I can relate to a lot of what you say because even um, for the large part of my life, I studied only in Catholic institutions. There you go. And you know, we grew up in a way where we revered uh, the life of Mother Teresa and anything about Gandhi or Mother Teresa, even uh, very, very uh, mild criticism would not be accepted just from a point of, uh, you know, uh, even discussion. Yeah. So uh, I know. That, that brings me to ask you, you know, what was the kind of reaction that came about after your work, works got popular? A pretty, uh, I, my reaction, ask, ask me about my own reaction. I went into depression because I was, I was uh, criticized, abused by Indians nonstop for about, um, I don't know, five years. Now I, d I don't get abused so much, actually. I think Indians just ignore me. And some of them probably think I'm a bit strange. And most of them think that I'm paid by some unknown organization or some sinister, uh, I wish I was. But anyway, that's the, you know, as you know, Indians look at everything through a prism of money, self-interest or sex or something like that. So why is, there, why is this man who's a doctor, he can build a nursing home or see another 35 patients, why is he spending his time, effort and money and energy doing this? Yeah, so he must have a monetary motive. Who's paying him? Yeah, you know, well, I said, yeah, loads of people are paying me Zanzibar, you know, I don't know, take your pick. So, right. so this is, this is um, very, uh, it is depressing for me, but if you ask me whether uh, I had any effect in, in India, I probably have a, a more, very modest effect. In the, wider, in the Western world, in, the Western, in Western Europe, I had, a, I had quite a substantial effect because right. no serious journalist in Western Europe uh, now uh, talks about Mother, Mother Teresa without looking at the criticism. And they are all, all the religion, religion editors, the theology editors of all the major, um, major uh, media houses, they all know about me and my, about my work. There's a huge documentary coming up on uh, one of the major channels, I can't remember which, in which I, I, I had a big part uh, in making it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, by the, I didn't accept any money, by the way, for that. I spent, uh, I don't know, 20 hours on it, uh, uh, but, um, you know, just to make sure that Indians, to make Indians more uh, flabbergasted and surprised, why is this man doing it? He doesn't do it for money. He, do, he does it because he is very angry that his uh, culture, his place of birth, his forefathers, and wh where he was brought up has been traduced uh, insulted, abused in that fashion by a, a retrograde, uh, very backward, obscurantist, um, right-wing woman. And he uh, has done something to address it. So that's why he's doing it. Uh, I hope that answers. And how, what? Anyway, go on. Sorry. Uh, no, no, in that sense, uh, the works that you've written has had a huge impact, at least the people who have uh, a critical mind, um, you know. Uh, yes, I hope so. Of preference, and in fact, I was a huge admirer of Christopher Hitchens, and that's how I came across your work as well. And then I realized this is the source of all. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was the one who put Hitchens onto the, onto the scent so, of uh, Mother Teresa, and 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 uh, when Tariq Ali's uh, Tariq Ali did the film, yeah. uh, Vania, the producer, she said that uh, we will do the archival research. But Hitchens would be a would be a good person to present it, and that's how Hitchens got involved because we rang him to to present it. Actually, he wrote the script as well. Right. So there is actually truly uh, this project is truly secular in that sense. You know, there was Tariq, there was, there was Christopher. So I think the church should the be biggest, one of the biggest atheists 
I'm I'm a, I'm a modest atheist uh -huh. because I don't I don't I used to actually when I was younger be very critical of people who believed. I now don't do that. I I, I accept that people many people would believe as long as they know as they, as they as long as they don't tell you that their religion is the only one as, uh, that's the best one. Uh, if they believe in a deity, I'm pretty sure they will. That's fine. You've just summarized the existential crisis of this world. <laughs> Apparently, that's the problem we all face. Um, Dada, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much indeed. Okay, thank you. Have a good day, yeah? You too. Thank you so much. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.